and welcome to the BBC School Report News from St Philip Howard School in Glossop for November 19th, 2009. Our top story today is... Yesterday, two teenage girls were found guilty of pushing 19-year-old Rosie Marie Boxall to her death. They were found guilty of manslaughter at the Old Bailey when they left Boxall to die after falling from a third-storey window at Kemia Josie's flat in South East London. Kemia Josie, 19, and Hattie Scan, 15, argued with Boxall over a pie, and this resulted in Boxall getting punched and kicked, having her hair pulled out and hairspray sprained into her face. Boxall originated from Brazil. After not having the best start to life, her mother, who was an alcoholic, left her at an early age. She was then put into foster care. After three years of being in foster, Reverend Simon Boxall adopted her and took her to live with his wife and four sons. She was raised in the suburbs of Rio de Janeiro. In 2005, the couple decided to return to, U- to the UK and while she failed to settle in, her four brothers found jobs and grew to like the UK. She studied, however, in March of 2007. She was asked to leave as she was not doing her required work and there was also a sudden change in her behaviour. In May 2008, she was abused and her hair was pulled. She was slapped and punched by a 13 and 17 year old girl. The prosecutors said that the girls were arguing over a bar who they had met the day before. The girls who, who they shared the flat with had been drinking vodka all day and after the argument, Boxall asked, do you want me to jump? The others replied, yes. She jumped in fear of more violence. Previous abuse has, al- has also included spraying air freshener in her face and ripping her clothes while she sat innocently on the bed. Left in her own blood, the girl shouted, serves you right. The pair are due to be sentenced next month as a video evidence from the neighbour proved this case. Whilst the is started to have been sobbing whilst the verdict was being read out. Two bodies have recently been found in Lebanon, near a local village, one of which is suspected to be Alec Collett, a journalist abducted in 1985. DNA tests are currently being undergone to determine if this is true. A spokesman from the Foreign Office has confirmed this, saying, We can confirm that that unidentified remains have been recovered. The operation is continuing. The other body has been identified as that of a currently unknown man. At age 64, Alec Collitz was a freelance journalist who was commissioned by the UN Relief and Works Agency. This was to write about refugee camps in Palestine. He was captured at gunpoint in Beirut around 24 years ago. Videos were released 19 years ago showing the claimed hanging of Mr Collett, but the victim has never been officially identified. The Abu Nidal organisation, or ANO, has also claimed to be the killers of Mr Collett. This was believed to be in reaction to the US air raid on Tripoli in 1986. There is new forensic information, a spokesman for the UN Relief and Works Agency told us, New remains have been found and are being identified. We are in touch with the family and they will be the first to know if there are any new developments. He added, UNRWA and the entire UN family remember Alec Collett, paying homage to him every year at UN headquarters in New York on the day of solidarity for detained and missing humanitarian workers. The two bodies were found in a solitary part of Bacar Valley by a forensics team after excavating the surrounding area. The unidentified man was the first to be found before leading the team to the currently other unidentified body, which is suspected to be Mr. Collett. His family has not commented. US President Barack Obama yesterday experienced a spectacular private tour of Asia's iconic historical landmark whilst on a business trip to China. Obama then concluded the visit with a working lunch alongside China's premier. Barack Obama gave his opinions about this this experience. It gives you a very good perspective on a lot of day-to-day things. They don't amount to much in the scope of history. He then added, Our time here on Earth is not that long, and we better make the best of it, quoted from the Telegraph. Obama spent his time at the Great Wall of China with John Huntsman, the US ambassador to China and the, and China's ambassador to the United States, and also alongside some other officials. The landmark that is usually flooding with tourists was yesterday shut down for the President's visit. Most of Forbidden City was also shut down on Tuesday. Obama also said about this momentous visit, It's magical, just walking down the ramp alone. It reminds you of the sweep of history, quoted from AOL News.
The Great Wall of China is a must-see for presidents from President Richard Nixon on and was definitely one of President Obama's major sightseeing spots during his eight-day tour around the region, which meant which was meant to show the U.S. re-engagement with Asia. His visit to the wall was then followed by a visit to Seoul and ended his trip by visiting South Korea. As President Obama walked down the ramp in a in a choreographed moment, the photographer's White House aides were triumphant and when the shots they had been planning. An epileptic dustman who mowed down a British couple from Yeovil, Somerset, whilst they were holidaying in New York, was yesterday charged with their murder. Andrew Hardy, age 47, and Jackie Hardy, age 48, were enjoying a day out at Madison Square Garden when they were suddenly hit by a refuse cart that had mounted onto the pavement. The man responsible for the incident was 54-year-old Overin Scarlett, who had claimed he had stopped taking his medication to refrain him from consuming alcohol. Yesterday, the Madison Supreme Court said this statement, Driving for you was a profoundly irresponsible act, and he'll not be able to ask for parole until 2029. The British couple were killed instantly after they were hit by Scarlett's truck just yards away from the hotel that they were staying in in February 2008. Arvin Scarlett yesterday was handed 20 years to life for each of their murders. A 21-year-old student called Meredith Kircher from Leeds was sexually assaulted and then murdered on the 1st of November 2007. A young man called Rudy Gerd was sentenced to 30 years imprisonment. He has now come forward and said he tried to save the life of the British students after hearing her scream. Gerd also claimed that when he was that's when he went to save the life of the Meredith he came across an unidentified man that attempted to attack him. He then went to say, he heard the man say, let's go, there's a black man in the house. He carried on saying, I went into the corridor and looked out the window, saw going away the outline of the Amanda Cox Knox at the meet Metro quoted. Amanda Knox was the Me Meredith Kircher's roommate on the exchange. Also quoted from the Metro, Good added, I want to let the Kircher family know that I did not kill or rape the little girl. Good has also told the court in Paraguay, Italy, that he is, appealed, is appealing against the convict. Two other people are in questioning. Amanda Knox, ex roommate and Rafael Celesto, ex-boyfriend, deny the wrongdoing and the trial is expected to take place sometime next month. Hi, this is Robert. And Thomas. And on Friday 20th of November, St. Philip Howard School is raising funds for the Children in Need charity by doing a creative dressing up day. This includes different groups of students dressing up as different things such as army and the navy, superheroes and villains, punk rockers and disco, and skiers and snowboarders. To do this, the pupils must bring in a pound if they want to dress up, so with lots of pupils in a school, goes lots of pounds to a charity. The school were impressed with how much money they raised last year by dressing up, so decided to do it again this year. In the past years, the school has done things other than dressing up, like throwing sponges at teachers, baking and selling cake. We have here uh, Miss Dawson from St. Philip Howard to ha answer a few questions for us. Why does this school mark the Children in Need event? Well, first of all, the Children in Need is a national recognised charity, um, and more importantly, it's for children, and as us being a school, it's important for us to you know, recognise those children that maybe don't have as much as you know, some people do in this school. So it's important to help them. Yesterday, whilst in a press conference, pro wrestler Ric Flair violently attacked reality TV star and former wrestling champion Hulk Hogan following a series of insults made by both wrestlers. They were there promoting their tour, Hulkamania, when the violence broke out. Hogan ended up a bloody mess whilst Flair got unscathed. Some commentators have suggested, however, that the altercation was staged and that the blood was the result of Hogan blading himself a common practice in pro wrestling involving deliberately using a razor blade to open a wound. The fact that Flair and Hogan will face each other on the tour has increased speculation that the fight was in fact a shameless publicity stunt. After attacking Hogan, Flair pounced at photographers' cameras and smashed them. One wrestling fan, a Mr Redmond, believed that the attack wasn't staged and that Flair really beat up Hogan. However, he believes that Hogan deserved it and that Ric Flair should be hailed as a hero.